There are many different kinds of axes, but all axes share similar features. Depending on the intended function of the axe, the shape of its features are going to differ. To explore these common features, we're going to focus on the kind of axe that I use most often, a carving hatchet. You can divide any axe into two main parts, the head and the haft. Starting at the bottom of the haft or handle, the end knob provides extra material to help prevent the axe from slipping out of your grip. Above the end knob, the haft curves back. This is the throat, gripping the axe down here while swinging can provide a lot of power, but often at the expense of accuracy. It's a good place to hold the axe when you've got a lot of material to remove and your non-dominant hand is well away from the area being worked. Above the throat, the haft begins to curve in again. This curve is the belly of the handle. Around the belly is where I tend to grip the axe the most as it provides a good balance of power and control. Just before the haft goes into the head, there's often a lump of wood. That's the shoulder of the handle. Gripping on or just below the shoulder gives the most amount of control, but at the expense of power. Useful for when you're working close to your non-dominant hand and when a high degree of accuracy is required. The haft extends through the head to the eye. Looking down the top of the head, you can see where the haft is wedged into the head. Pro tip when selecting an ax, look for grain that's running in line with the ax head for maximum durability. At the back of the head is the pole or butt. I cannot lie, I like big butts. This may look similar to a hammer face, but most butts aren't meant for pounding. Every now and again, I'll use a wooden mallet to strike the butt for precision splitting of smaller pieces of wood. Too much pounding might start to deform the eye, but that hasn't happened to any of my axes yet. The sides of the ax head are called the cheeks. Sometimes the cheek extends slightly down the handle. That would be called a lug. Lugs are there to increase the area of metal to wood contact to keep your head attached to your haft. Moving along the cheek towards the business end of the head, we have the bit. Careful, the bit bites. I haven't been badly bitten by the bit, but blimey, bites from the bit are bad. This section of the bit that extends down towards the handle is the beard. Having a beard is always good. The advantage of a bearded axe that has space for your fingers means that you can put your hand right behind the cutting edge. This lets us take advantage of our sense of proprioception. Proprioception is our sense of where our body is in relation to itself. It lets us close our eyes and touch our nose. So if your hand is right behind the cutting edge, you'll have a much better intuitive sense of where the edge is, allowing for greater accuracy. This shiny part is the bevel, and the bevel ends in the cutting edge. The bevel is the part that we focus on when we're sharpening the axe and the cutting edge is the edge that cuts. The bottom corner of the bit is the heel and the top corner is the toe. I assume that's because with most slicing cuts, you want the heel to strike first and then rock forward and lift off the toe, maybe. So there you have it, the anatomy of an axe. Are there any parts that you think I missed out? If so, let me know in the comments below. 
If you found this video useful, consider giving it a like. I plan on breaking down the anatomy of all the tools I use in green woodworking. So if you'd like to see those videos, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.